Rub up your engines! We're having a battle between the car makers and independent garages. Now, there's a big stink going on because of all this helping with safety of lane departure and automatic braking. If you don't brake and it sees something that starts to break the car, a lot of the dealers now, the manufacturers, saying you can only take it to us to get those systems fixed, that they will void the warranties if you take it somewhere else. And the aftermarket guys are saying, hey, you can't make a product that that you say you're the only people that can work on it? That's not fair. For years, as an independent mechanic, we've all been fighting to get all the information to repair cars, and that they can't be secret. I mean, there's companies like Nissan that really took it to an extreme, and years ago, when it was made so that if you had to replace the computer in a car, it would have to be reprogrammed when you bought a new computer, reprogrammed and set so not only would your car run right, but that the security system would work. And companies like Nissan, they wouldn't even give that information to private mechanics. Now they will, they have to, but they can make it a real runaround because the law is they have to make this information available to independent mechanics at a fair price. Now what does fair mean? Some of these companies in order to access that you got to pay over a thousand dollars a year and some of them are fair. Like Ford has a deal that's like forty nine dollars for uh, a one time use one for a day or a couple of days and hey that's fair you know but if it's a thousand something dollars and you got to pay for a whole year subscription of course a lot of mechanics are going to say I don't work on enough of those so I'm not going to buy that I'll just tell them take it to the dealer it's it's a raw deal that the manufacturer is doing. They're trying to say, oh, we have the monopoly. We built these systems. We're the only ones that can work on them. Well, it shouldn't be that way. The information should be readily available, especially when it comes to safety things like this, that if it's going to be a safety thing, they should be able to, everybody should be able to get the information on it. None of it should be hidden. It should be all out there so that anybody that works on cars will be able to access information and fix them correctly. Yeah, it's going to require special equipment. There's no arguing that, but I mean, I already have a lot of this, equipment. But if they're not going to give me access to that information to fix somebody's car, hey, that's not right. And there's a big battle going on now between the manufacturers. Some of them, like I say, say, oh, the warranty, you, you will avoid the warranty if you have somebody else fix it. Well, they used to say that back in the day about stuff. And then they had that pretty much said that, hey, if they're going to say oh, they're the only people that fix it, then they're going to have to supply the parts for free. <laughs> the Moss Magnuson warranty. So here we go again. The manufacturers are battling with the independent mechanics because of course they want to make all the money for themselves because if you do a little study when I was young they actually made quite a bit of money selling cars but now they make actually most of their profit repairing cars and they want to make it so they're the only people who can repair cars not a good idea so if anybody sees there's any kind of legislation going out there that's trying to say oh they're the only ones that can fix it definitely find out about it and vote against it so that they can't just say oh we're the only ones who can work on your car because if that's the case you know they're going to jack the rates up. It's just the way the world goes in a capitalist society. Here we go. General Motors is at it again. They just recalled six hundred and thirty eight thousand SUVs and trucks that may just start breaking themselves unintentionally. The autonomous braking system that they have to keep you from getting in accidents. It turns out that some of them having a bad sensor on them. And so what they do is on the wheel that has a bad sensor, they start breaking the other side, so it pulls to the side, and it's happened to people on the highway, and the car starts pulling to the side, slamming to one side of the brake, not even both where you're going to stop straight, it's going to do one side, and it's going to pull to one side dramatically. This covers from 2014 to 2020, Suburbans, Tahoes, you want to check the recall, anytime there's a recall like that, that's a dangerous one, just get your VIN number that's on your door, the vehicle identification number, go to the National Highway, Traffic and Safety Association website. It's free. You type your VIN number in and it'll show you all the recalls. If yours is recalled, just print that recall right off of there and then take it in. Or, you know, everybody else hardly anybody prints anymore. Put it on your phone, take a snapshot of it, go to the dealer and have them fix it for free. Because this is a real dangerous thing that, I mean, the brake just decides all of a sudden, oh, one side is going to break while you're going down the road. Like I said, for years, GM has had problems with their ABS brake systems. When they 
first came out with them, they had class action lawsuits. I had customers that owned them that got in wrecks. They said they hit their brakes and nothing happened. And they ran into somebody and this was all ABS system related. Still today, GM has not figured the ABS systems out. Another reason I tell people not to buy these cars. I mean, I don't trust them. They have a history of faults. And as you can see, some of these are even 2020s. Here's a case where a safety device is supposed to help brake if you don't is actually causing a problem where you're gonna break half the car and it can swerve and you'll run into somebody because the safety device didn't work right like those Boeing Max planes where it was supposed to help the pilots that actually hindered them and two of them crashed that's why I'm not a big fan of all this if they want to test them out let them test it out better than they're testing them out because they didn't test this out very well now they got to recall 638,000 of these things here's one that might make electric cars more popular a scientist Zhao Yang Wang has come up with a way that if you heat up the battery cells you can charge them almost fully in only 10 minutes when they heat it up to 60 degrees Celsius which is like 140 degrees Fahrenheit in 10 minutes they can recharge most of the battery at a higher temperature it becomes a much better conductor and it can be recharged faster so even the Tesla modern super stations that they have they take about 50 minutes to charge a car if they can do it in 10 hey and now the guy's thinking of trying to make, set it up so that it can recharge them in five minutes which is pretty much you know filling your car up at a gas pump if they can actually get this to go of course the only problem is from my perspective if you heat them up too much sometimes especially lithium ion batteries have a tendency of starting on fire you see the ones where they start on fire in a phone in somebody's pocket it could be a while before this becomes something that's used all the time with electric cars because really when you think about it millions of them out there and you're plugging them in there heating them up and some of them start to blow up this is in the very beginning stages of it but they're trying all different kinds of things to do just hope that it isn't a deal where they start trying it out as guinea pigs and then these cars are exploding and starting on fire at the charging stations John 3 says Scott I got no one Nissan Altima I turned the key and turned it it clicked but then nothing no power to anything no cranking no lights nothing I opened hood looked around then I got turned it and started up what could have caused it odds are you got a loose battery terminal something is loose because when you turn the key and all you hear is a click that means the solenoid of the starter is clicking in to the flywheel of the engine and then the motor the starter motor is supposed to spin but all you got was a click if you don't have enough power going to the starter that's exactly what will happen now a bad starter can do that too but a bad starter isn't going to make no lights no anything else when you have the key turned on if the starter was bad and you did that you hear a click but then when you let go all the dash lights and everything would be on but since you had no lights at all you went under the hood and looked around you probably like touched the battery terminal or something and it was a little loose and just touching it made it a little tighter I would say remove both battery terminals clean them with little cleaners wire brush put them back on tighten them super tight and you'll probably find it won't ever happen again now if it does happen again then you're gonna have to trace all the wiring from all the cables because somewhere something is loose and it's not connecting tight enough odds are it's just a loose or dirty battery terminal although I see that all the time 202 right size 2001 Acura Integra can I get one for a first car I want the sedan but I can't find one I wouldn't mind the coupe those were excellent cars when they were new now they're 19 years old it depends on the shape it's in and the mileage you didn't say the mileage because they can last a long time but it's a 19 year old car you don't want to pay too much if it's your first car and you can get a good price on it you have a mechanic check it out because you never know if they wreck flood or stone but a mechanic checks it out and says yes the engine and especially the transmission I know you would want the automatic transmission checked out fully if it's a standard you just drive it if it drives it's fine because those are real strong but the automatics are a little bit weak you'd want a mechanic to check all that out with a scan tool but if you said it was okay and you got it at a cheap enough price hey hey they can be good cars I did custom Bar. just realize a 19 year old car is a 19 year old car it's still got some age on it and you're not going to be driving that thing 20,000 miles a year or then you're going to start putting some serious money in. but you get it cheap enough they can be good first cars I've had customers buy them as knock around cars they buy a car like that it's got like 110,000 miles and they pick it up for maybe 1500 2000 dollars and they drive it for a few years and they're okay cars four says Scotty I've been looking at buying a 2019 Nissan Frontier Pro 4X they've been around for 15 years a lot of trucks are overpriced 
and these have been pretty simple. What are your thoughts? Okay, the Frontiers are decent pickup trucks. Now, they're not going to last as long as a Toyota Tacoma. There's no arguing that, but they are decent pickup trucks, and as you said, you can get a good price on a 2019 because they're remodeling everything. If you have to get an automatic, that's where it becomes problematic because Nissan always uses those Jatco transmissions company that Nissan owns, and Jatco automatic transmissions are notorious for being problems. I got customers with the Frontiers that were very happy with them and they could last a really long time and you're talking about the Pro 4X that's their top of the line one you're never going to be able to get a Toyota Tacoma for the kind of money you can pick that thing up for so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell